Hello, my name is Jared Gilbranson. I'm a transit planner and project manager with WSP USA. We're an engineering and planning consulting firm that has been working closely with the city of Lincoln and StarTran over the last seven months to develop this feasibility and concept design study for a new multimodal transit and transfer center or MTTC in downtown Lincoln. We had been planning to do a second public engagement for our study uh, about this time, but given the precautions uh, due to COVID-19, um, we've decided to move what would have been an, an open house in person format uh, to a digital format uh, with this presentation in a, an online survey, which we will discuss in greater detail in a few minutes. In this presentation, I want to give uh, an overview of this project and the study that we've uh, been conducting over the last many months. Uh, we'll discuss some of the survey findings we had from an earlier public survey, discuss a site selection process we used to find the new home for the future transit center, uh, and discuss what that preferred site was uh, and is, what the conceptual design uh, has, has come to after a long process, and then get into some details about a new MetroQuest survey we have out currently uh, that will provide us some, some further information before we finalize the project. Early on in the study, uh, the study team, along with an advisory committee uh, that was comprised of uh, staff members from the city of Lincoln, uh, as well as uh, stakeholders from the downtown area, including transit riders and bus operators, uh, helped us to come up with a list of project goals uh, that would help guide the study uh, through a su successful completion. Uh, these goals uh, included uh, that the transit center needed to reflect the needs of StarTran passengers and stakeholders, as well as the greater Lincoln community. The MTTC, or Transit Center Facility, uh, should be designed with sustainable best practices and examine uh, opportunities for LEED certification or include sustainability features. Now, the MTTC facility should accommodate multiple mobility services that include uh, buses, pedestrians, cyclists, electric scooters, transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft, uh, inner city commuter uh, bus operations like Greyhound or Jefferson Lines, uh, future bus rapid transit or autonomous vehicles in the future. Um, the, the new transit center should improve safety and comfort and convenience for StarTran passengers. The new transit center should improve StarTran operational efficiency and schedule reliability. The study should investigate opportunities for mixed use or joint development or other forms of transit oriented development, things like incorporations of coffee shops within a transit center. The MTTC should be flexible and adaptable as infrastructure and passenger needs evolve in the coming years. The transit center should provide equitable access for users of all ages and abilities uh, to, to access multiple mobility options that will improve uh, availability of opportunities across the greater Lincoln area. And lastly, that the transit center plan should be developed in a way that can attract capital uh, funds uh, and meet the requirements of those funding programs. So these goals are not ranked in any order, uh, but just kind of an overall uh, way to guide the study. This is a condensed look at our overall project schedule and some of the major tasks that uh, we've incorporated. Uh, we started the project back in October of 2019 uh, by examining the existing conditions uh, in the downtown area and reviewing many planning documents, including the uh, downtown master plan. November, we had our first advisory committee meeting where those goals were shaped and refined, and we began our first public engagement with the survey we'll discuss in a moment. We also began gathering the different site alternatives around downtown Lincoln that we would look for a future transit center. In December, we began assessing and screening those sites. Uh, and then into January, we began narrowing those down to a preferred site and developing conceptual layouts of what a transit center could lo look like on that site. In February, again, we met with uh, our advisory committee uh, and did a design workshop, looking at those different concepts that we came up and refined those further uh, into a, a better site plan. Uh, that we came out with in March as we uh, came up with a draft plan for the future transit center. Again, those are revised further into April 
and now we're into our second round of public engagement. We're looking to finalize um, the study here in May uh, once we conclude our final piece of public engagement. So the public survey, this came out in uh, the October-November timeframe of 2019. We used a platform called MetroQuest, which is an interactive online survey tool. It's not your typical survey of uh, check a box for this. It's more interactive, somewhat game-like. Uh, we almost had 600 surveys taken um, while it was open. We asked questions uh, for participants to rank the goals we just discussed and give them some priority uh, to prioritize the different amenities that could be included within a transit center. We asked people what their general trip purposes was that were on transit, uh, whether it be for education, for work, um, or other purposes. We asked people generally where they started their trip, where they ended their trip, and then some basic demographic questions. The overall participant profile, um, the age, uh, the largest percentage was 36% were 36 to 50 years old. 19% uh, of respondents were 30 to 35, and 19% were 50 to 60, 51 to 65 years old. Um, vast majority of survey respondents uh, uh, reported being Caucasian. And household income, 31% um, reported be their household uh, annual income between 50,000 and 100,000, with 23% being uh, 25,000 to 50,000. We asked respondents to tell us uh, how often they use public transit, and over 60% use transit at least a few times a month, uh, and about just under 40% said they don't use transit currently. The introductory screen of the survey provides general information about what the study is and what we're trying to accomplish with the survey. The first survey question screen uh, asked participants to rank our study goals, which we simplified into some short statements. And if you clicked on any of these statements, it provided more uh, complete information of what that goal was trying to get at. We asked participants then to drag at least three of those um, goals above that line as their top preference. And then once above that line, to then rank order those um, in order of importance one, two, and three. The results of that screen and that exercise uh, showed that improve system efficiency and schedule reliability um, was the number one priority of all the goals. Second was uh, improve uh, equitable access for all users and abilities and ages to access the transit system. And number three was to improve uh, safety and security at the transit center site. The next activity for uh, survey participants was a budget allocation exercise. Um, we gave them a fictional $100, essentially, to allocate amongst different transit center amenity types. And these included things like an indoor climate-controlled waiting area, covered boarding platforms, seating, lighting, technology amenities that could include free public Wi-Fi or real-time next bus arrival information. Uh, participants could allocate uh, this, this fictional money uh, in any one of these categories. They could put $100. Uh, into indoor waiting, or they could choose to spread it around uh, in various ways. Results of this showed that 20% uh, saw indoor waiting as uh, most important, followed by covered boarding platforms, seating, and then there was essentially a tie for, for fourth with lighting and technology amenities being included. This also showed us that uh, other things that were nice to have, um, such as retail accommodations, um, or bicycle storage, bicycle or scooter rental um, were not necessarily a priority, um, but would be nice to have included in a transit center if possible. Next, we ask people to drop a pin where they start their trip generally and where they end a trip and also by what mode they use, whether it's transit or walking, biking, uh, or taking a car. The red pins on this map indicate where people ended their trip. And while there was a, a wide scattering of, of destinations. We did see some clustering around uh, the UNL campus, uh, the Capitol area, the Lancaster government buildings, uh, and uh, the Gold's uh, transfer location. So I want to make sure that when we're citing a, a new transit center, we don't move too far away from um, these important clusters.
For our site selection process, we used a multi-tiered methodology where we started with a, a large number of potential uh, sites within the downtown area and then began screening those down until we found um, the optimal site um, that we could do more detailed planning on um, in the downtown. For the prerequisites, these were essentially pass-fail uh, questions for each site that we looked at in the downtown area. Um, so first, it needed to be located in, in what we defined as the, the study area, um, which had Salt Creek Road uh, to the north, Pinnacle Arena Drive to the west, K Street to the south, and Antelope Valley Parkway uh, to the east. Uh, a site must accommodate all route movements of StarTran and bus sizes, uh, so we couldn't have a site that was undersized. Uh, the site must accommodate all the program needs, so we wanted all bus routes to be able to transfer passengers at the same time on one site, and also include things like uh, StarTran administration staff offices um, on the same location. We wanted to make sure there were no environmental restrictions for a potential site, meaning that it could uh, be located in an existing floodplain or potentially a, a site that had uh, previously been contaminated by hazardous materials or other things like that. Also, we couldn't have a site that had any uh, historic properties on it or were adjacent to any historic properties that could cause uh, issues with further development of the project. And lastly, the, the location did not add any operational cost to the fixed route StarTran network. If we were to move the transit center too far in any location, any direction, uh, it could cause certain routes to add buses and bus operators um, to maintain their schedules, which would increase uh, operational costs to the agency. Sites that passed the prerequisite were then moved into a more detailed uh, selection criteria screening where they were uh, scored uh, on a number of different categories. We broke them into three general categories, which were multimodal connectivity, suitability and feasibility, social and economic benefit. Those that are bolded uh, within these subcategories um, were, were seen by our advisory committee uh, as being the most important um, of, of those different uh, criteria and were weighted uh, a little more heavily in the scoring. So in the multimodal connectivity, pedestrian connectivity was important as well as those transit connections, making sure that we could uh, have all routes meet at the same time, which isn't currently um, possible at the existing Golds transit location. Um, for suitability and feasibility, block size and geometry, again, having enough space um, to meet the program requirements uh, and then maintain the existing routing and operational scale uh, of, of the StarTran network. In social and economic benefit, um, one of the most important things um, was that we, the, the new transit center aligned with the recommendations um, and the vision of the downtown master plan. And also that the, the transit center is located in proximity to compatible land uses and amenities, things like uh, higher density uh, residential, as well as higher density employment areas in the downtown. In total, we looked at 17 different sites uh, around the downtown study area. Ten of those sites did not pass the prerequisite screening, and seven were moved into the more detailed uh, criteria and scoring um, that helped us uh, rank and come down to uh, our preferred site. So all the numbers, uh, all the blocks in downtown Lingen are numbered, uh, and the site we landed on was the southern half of what is known as Block 69. This is along M Street between 9th and 10th Street, and it is one block uh, southeast of the Golds location. So some details about Block 69, which again is on M Street between 9th and 10th. Uh, there's currently a building uh, on the uh, eastern half of the of the site. It is centrally located in the downtown area. It's got very good connectivity to the N Street cycle track, which is just to the north, a half a block. Uh, it's in great uh, proximity to new residential uh, developments that are that have been built in the area recently, uh, as well as a number of jobs that exist in that part of the downtown area. Uh, it requires minimal adjustment to StarTran routes, being that it's just a block to the southwest from the current Golds transfer location. And the site is largely under uh, the ownership uh, of the city of Lincoln. 
Here's another view of the site. You can see we're talking about just the southern half of this block. This is an aerial view of that site again. You can see the two-story building on the eastern half, surface parking uh, on the western side. Something that was important to our assessment too when thinking about a new transit center is what would be the uh, impacts to existing traffic flow, uh, both impacts to the StarTran network to uh, ensure that um, StarTran bus routes and their schedules were not impacted by traffic congestion in a specific area, and vice versa, that StarTran uh, vehicles coming to a new destination would not cause uh, undue congestion to auto traffic in the area. So in these maps, we looked at the current level of traffic service in both the AM and PM peak rush hours. Uh, level of service is generally measured on a scale from A through F, where F is basically complete gridlock and no traffic is moving. Level of service A is uh, complete free flow uh, of traffic. And level of service C is generally where we see a good balance between the existing roadway capacity and the traffic flowing through there. So this is our site here at 9th and M and 10th. Uh, we can see in the morning that all the intersections around there are operating at a really good level of service A and B. So there's excess capacity um, for additional cars and in this case buses um, to be coming to this area. And the, the AM peak period is generally 7 AM uh, to 9 AM. In the PM peak, we're generally talking between 4 PM and 6 PM. Again, this is the same location we can see uh, most of the intersections around our site are at a level service B and at M and 9th is a level service C. So this tells us that bringing more uh, star train vehicles here is not going to have uh, a negative impact to existing uh, traffic operations and star train buses are not going to be delayed uh, in any rush hour traffic. So with the conceptual design uh, of a new transit center, we begin by thinking about what are the program needs and requirements um, of a future transit center. So we start by thinking how many buses and bus bays uh, need to be included on a site. Um, what does the passenger infrastructure need to be for indoor waiting, uh, as well as StarTran office space uh, and different categories such as that. What are the size of buses along with the number of buses? And we need to think out over 30, 40, 50 years that the new transit center uh, could be in operation. So we begin to think about things uh, that are non-transit uses too around the exterior of the building. Um, the need for parking stalls, uh, bike racks, bike lockers, scooter share spaces. Um, if there's any zip car or car share spaces. Um, uh, so any, any places for um, Uber or Lyft to pick up and drop off need to be considered. We also think of things about needs for uh, public gathering spaces uh, where trash and recycling will need to be kept uh, and dumpsters, uh, electric generators. Uh, if there's any public art locations or green space that need to be included in the, in the site, um, these all need to be accounted for as we start to lay things out. For the building itself, we start to think about square footage of passenger waiting areas, StarTran administrative offices, uh, StarTran bus operator break areas, um, as well as building services for, for janitorial and, and maintenance um, of, the, of the site and of the facility, and also potentially for any transit-oriented development uses, a coffee shop or, or other type of, of retail um, space within the facility. So we use all this information to, to, to combine to a general footprint and we come up with several different concepts. Um, after several different alternatives and variations, we worked through with our advisory committee through a, a long workshop, um, we came to uh, this conceptual layout plan for our site along M Street between 9th and 10th again, where we would have uh, a center island main platform here with um, eight boarding locations. Uh, within the middle would be a two-story uh, building. On the ground floor would be the uh, indoor passenger waiting area. The second floor would be uh, StarTran administrative uh, offices. Uh, all boarding areas and platforms would have some kind of cover from the elements. 
um, provide shade uh, in the summer and you know, keep rain and snow and ice off during the winter. Um, there would be seating and lighting um, for, for these uh, floating areas. And uh, this would accommodate up to 14 uh, bus bays. Currently, there are 12 routes that are serving the Golds location and only six uh, boarding locations. So this would allow for all current StarTrans services to transfer passengers at the same time, at the same location uh, in this configuration, and also allow two additional uh, bus bays were or two new routes to come into service uh, in the future. M Street is also planned to be converted from a two-way or a one-way eastbound to a two-way street in the coming years. Um, when that does happen, um, the block face along M Street could be converted potentially to uh, further expansion of upwards of three more boarding platforms if more routes uh, were needed to uh, come and access uh, the new transit center site. We took a look at where routes could conceptually um, be assigned a boarding location. Um, for this concept, we thought about what routes are coming to the transit center most often. So routes that have a 30 minute frequency that would come to, or better, um, coming to the transit center would be assigned boarding locations around the center island platform. Um, routes that were coming to the transit center on an hourly basis would be assigned to the boarding platforms around the perimeter. There would be a covered walkway, a raised covered walkway from the center island platform and the indoor waiting area out to the uh, perimeter uh, locations. The A and B location, uh, the A spot is uh, going to be initially reserved for a, a new inner city commuter bus service that is uh, will be coming uh, operational in the coming year or two that will provide um, connectivity between Lincoln uh, and Omaha. And the B location would be for Star Trans service vehicles. Uh, most buses would be entering from the 9th Street side. About 26 uh, vehicles per hour would come in, and most vehicles would exit, buses would exit on the M Street side and then go on their route um, from there. So it would have bi directional flow through here to access these different sawtooth routes. This is a conceptual visualization of what the new transit center could look like in the future. Uh, this is not exactly what it will look like. There's a lot more work uh, and design and refinement that will need to be done before that um, comes into play. But this is just to begin to think about what a transit center could look like in three dimensions uh, in the real world and, and to begin some discussion. So in this visualization, uh, M Street here uh, is, is here to the bottom of the picture. 10th Street is, is over here, and 9th Street uh, is kind of up in the background here, and this visual is looking to generally to the northwest. Uh, we see here the, the main island uh, with the boarding platforms and, and the main transit center building. On the ground floor, again, we would have our indoor passenger waiting area. On the second floor would be Star Trans administrative offices. Uh, you can see this raised um, pedestrian walkway that, that, that does provide a, a covering to the outer edge um, boarding platforms. This also kind of creates a speed table um, for transit vehicles that will be operating uh, in this area, it gets them to slow down, and also clearly identifies that this is a pedestrian walkway and helps to enhance safety um, where we have those conflict points between um, buses and pedestrians. Sustainability was uh, something that came up quite a bit in our discussions. In this visualization, we it's a little difficult to see, but we did try to include a concept where we would uh, integrate solar panels to the roof of the main building as well as potentially on this covered walkway to help um, with electrical uh, utility needs on site. In this view, it's the we see the pedestrian um, covering here. This is M Street in the foreground. Uh, 10th Street is over here. 9th Street is, is off to the side, and we are looking generally to the northeast. In this visualization, uh, 9th Street would be to our back, and we are looking generally to the east. 
again, administrative office on the second floor, indoor passenger waiting on the ground floor, and we've included spaces for uh, bicycle share location, um, parking areas for electric scooters. You can see these are just a, an idea of some kind of a protection, some kind of a covering um, at each boarding uh, location around the platform um, to provide protection from wind, rain, uh, and the sun. So through all our work, uh, we've estimated uh, this rough uh, early stage of planning that total engineering and construction costs would be in the $12 million range. StarTran is currently uh, applying for federal funding that could help support upwards of 80% of the project costs if they are uh, selected for funding. It would be a, a great boost to the project and really help jumpstart um, the transit center project and, and move it closer uh, to a reality. So as we look to uh, conclude the study in the coming weeks and month here, uh, we have a new MetroQuest survey that is, that is live right now. Um, we are looking to get public opinion and comment um, on, on what we've shown in this presentation, uh, as well as uh, some of the more aesthetic elements that could be included within a transit center. Um, how the transit center should be designed, should it have modern architecture, more, um, more traditional architecture, um, what are some trade-offs that might be uh, necessary for this transit center? Should we have more um, security cameras or more personnel, uh, security personnel on site, things like that? Uh, again, it's very interactive. It's very game-like. Uh, it's not a typical boring survey. Uh, so we'd encourage you to please go take the survey. It takes about five minutes to work through um, the different screens and activities. Um, and then on the final wrap-up screen, there are some demographic questions. There's also some links to share um, the survey if you're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, or Instagram, or other social media outlets. You can easily share this survey with your friends. Um, we would encourage that. We want to get as many uh, points of view, many uh, opinions and questions and comments as we can get um, before we conclude um, this study and take those things into account. The survey will be open until May 15th, so once again, um, please uh, take the survey and, uh, and spread the word for us. So the next steps as we think about concluding um, this feasibility and concept design study for a new transit center in downtown, uh, we're going to be finalizing the collection of, of the public comment through that survey. Um, that'll help us refine um, our layouts, our plans, uh, and cost estimation as well as finalize the final report um, that will uh, you know, advance the project into its next phases of more detailed uh, engineering uh, and design. So thank you very much for your time. This is a lot of information to, uh, to cover in a, in a short period of time and a short presentation. Please feel free to visit the project website, which is listed here, which will provide more information and more background if you care to uh, investigate more. If you have any specific questions uh, on the project uh, and, and its outcomes or want to provide any comments, please reach out to Brian Priner. He is the project manager uh, for StarTran uh, for this study. His email and phone number are listed here. You can also reach out to, to me. My name is, again, Jared Branson. I am the project manager with WSP, and my email and phone number are listed here as well. We think this is a fantastic project. Uh, and, and a great uh, opportunity to improve mobility um, and, uh, and the transit system uh, for Lincoln for decades to come. So again, thank you, and uh, please take time to check out the survey. Thanks again.